it's really messed up if you put it all together, Christian. Welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Uh, tonight, I am joined by a pretty full cast. We had to pull in the uh, bullpen here uh, since Anna and I do not collect the uh, studio series or don't collect enough of it um, to do the review that we wanted to do here for Devastator. So, so tonight, I have with me, I've got Christian. Hello. And I also have Serge. Hey. And Sean. Good evening. And then, of course, Anna. I'm last, even in my of own course. show. You're not last. I haven't introduced myself yet, so Lucas as well. So <laughs> Yeah, there you go. The five of us can combine into Devastator. It's no, not eight of us. <laughs> eight. Oh, is it eight? Okay, well, yeah. Eight. Yeah. you don't collect you need a few more cast members. I don't collect this. I have no idea. Crap out of here. <laughs> I was going to get the special box set that point. only costs like... Five hundred dollars or whatever, right? Here he is. Look how scary he is. I so wasn't ugly. looking over for a minute, and I thought that you'd put on a Halloween mask. This would be a really good <laughs> Halloween mask. There you go. Yeah. I'm so, so the box set that they lucky. put out—have we actually gotten it offered by Hasbro yet, or has it just been put up no. on like TF Source? It's only been put up by TF Source, from what I've heard. Um, they offered it and then it went away. Like they okay. offered it to wholesalers and then they just said, "Nope, never mind. It's not on wholesale anymore." It, it will also be up for pre-order. Pulse. Yeah, at PulseCon. Yeah. Um, I guess the well, job. Maybe, maybe that'll three. be a PulseCon exclusive. I guess we'll we'll find out next week. Nice week at PulseCon. So the job of our three Studio Series collectors, if you choose to accept it, is to try and convince Lucas and I that even though we don't collect studio series and we don't care about that figure, that we actually need it. Good luck. Well, yeah, that ain't happening. I mean, if you don't Especially have at the now, aftermarket prices now. Yeah. 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 Good luck but getting we'll get a box set, Lucas. Well, we I'm don't know 100%. Dollars. There could be a thing in the future. No, we have to continue the tradition of uh, figures that you can only get for aftermarket prices. It's true. That are but above retail. The, the box set's probably a thing. We've seen packaging for it. It probably exists. Let's hope so. And then it'll sell out like in a few minutes and people will rage on the internet. It probably won't. It'll be fine. So the first thing... I want to say about this Devastator is that more than any combiner I've had recently, this feels like one unit. I mean, it's just ridiculous how, like, he doesn't come apart. He feels just, he feels like Devastator. He doesn't feel like yeah. a pile of other robots. He feels like one big old fucking <sighs> robot. The way that they uh, did the combination, let me move my keyboard out of the way. I have mine in the fours. All fours. It took me a while to. There's a couple different ways that you can do it, um, but yeah, once you the the combination. The only ones that are si the similar to other combiners are the arms. It's kind of like a pseudo uh, combiner wars port. Uh, it's a little bit different, um, but the way that the rest of it puts together is, you know, it's it's complete own uh, system, really, and it really you know, it holds. Well, <laughs> it, <laughs> it holds together somewhat well. Oh my god, that's hilarious! I shook mine and didn't. Does anybody didn't have an extra scrapper for sale? <laughs> Poor scrapper. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's combining mechanisms are really simple, so that makes them really strong if you do them correctly. Like the legs just have. Um, I can show you actually. They. Um, they connect by just a really long tab there. So it's, um, where's the bit? It's these two tabs right here on long haul. And they grab onto just the, sh the shovel piece on overload here. And it's just, it's so easy. There's not really room for it to break because it's just a, you know, simple non-moving connection. 
I got mine into a uh, handstand pose, a one-handed handstand pose. Handstand pose. Wow. I don't know how much you guys like that. No, I'm lying. I'm just messing with you. Oh, Sean. Hey, I you almost you convinced me I needed to buy this. Um, you know, it's like the it's like Devastator learned how to uh, like he grew up after the movie and learned how to walk finally. So now he's he's standing up. But uh, I mean, he has good detail. The um, if you don't have his instructions, it is a chore to put them together because you don't know how to mangle the pieces in just the right mangled way to make it uh, combine. So yeah, whenever I put it together, it was very uh, it was more like a job than than uh, fun. But I think after you do it a few times. You should be able to do it pretty easy. It's just that first time of being like, okay, I have eight robots I have to mangle to put together to to get him into a uh, Devastator mode. So, it, like Serge said, he doesn't really combine any any way that we know of before. Like the arms kind of do Combiner Wars y things, but the rest of them, it, it's pretty unique. So, yeah, Sean's right. And I moved, I think, twice since this series started coming out, so I did not have the instructions. Yes. Uh, that, that was a fun time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have Overload, and I didn't have um, uh, Mixed Master's instructions, so I had to watch the video. Um, so if it was a you, challenge, how challenging was it? Is this like a 10-hour project, four days? It was definitely minutes? an oh. hour project. Yeah, it took, took me an hour. But it, it's that's to go from... I, had, I display my stuff in bot mode. You have to transform most of them from vehicle mode. And then into combiner mode, so I was transforming yeah, one it's a lot and then two stages. Yeah, it's a lot easier going from uh, vehicle into the combination mode. I think that's what the instructions have you start in other ways. Yep. This, this I guess is a hand. That's how so the how hand it... looked in the movie. Yeah. In person, how does it feel for it not to be like most of our combiners? these days are very humanoid, right? We recently, in a pre-record, I have no idea if it's aired or when it's airing, we talked about things like power core combiners. You know, power core combiners didn't have proper hands. They didn't have proper feet. And since then, we had all these Combiner Wars guys, and they're just, they're, they're hands, handy hands. They're footy foots. They look like the actual thing that they're modeled after. The thing does not. How does that feel in person? Does it feel like it's still cool because it's accurate to the movie, or does it feel messy? Well, um, I think it's really cool. <clears throat> it's a cool concept just because typically you have arms, hands to plug in to make hands, feet to plug in to make feet. They look like feet. This one's actually using all the parts of each transformer to make, you know, a, a foot made out of a bed of a of a uh, dump truck and a hand made out of different shovels. So it's like, it's like if a transformer actually transformed into a big devastator, I mean, this would make sense as far as, you know, them not having extra hands and a whole, whole uh, waist and legs that come out of nowhere to plug in to make the waist and legs of devastator. So it's, 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 it is a cool concept and it came out cool. So I'm happy with it. My son really likes it. He was, he was ecstatic to put it together. Um, anybody else want to talk about the uh, combinations? Yeah, I, I think it not being humanoid and the, the hands being the way they are actually are a plus for this. Like Sean said, it just fits the design philosophy of the movies. You know, they don't have extra parts that just walk in from nowhere. They you know form from their own bodies. Yeah. So this does that, and it's totally good. Yeah, no, it's it's and it's pretty much one solid chunk, um, and for the most part, the color scheme goes together. Um, you know, the, it's all construction vehicles, so they look like they look like a team uh, when you put them together. Um, and you know, they definitely they took a lot of things into consideration when designing. I mean, the the swivel or the um, ankle articulation, um, nice heavy yeah, ratchets on, on on both of them. Um, the joints on overload are extremely tight, which is really good because you want them to, you know, hold the weight of the figure together. 
But I mean, it's just insane. I mean, eight figures into one, that's the most ambitious combiner they've ever done. And I think they did a really good job. This, I think this is a good sign uh, moving forward because now we'll be able to do combiners in this scale. Who knows if they're going to redo the G1 combiners, but I could definitely see them doing so uh, in a much bigger scale. You know, where they could do the main body as a leader class, and then instead of deluxes for the arms and legs, they could do uh, voyagers for those. You know, they, they've seen people have collected this, and you know, over the span of two years, so. You know, that goes to shows that if the movie guys are willing to do it, I think the G1 guys are definitely willing to do it. So I think it's a huge plus for Hasbro. But we complained so much about it being over two years. We went it over like 20 minutes. It's like one live, five minutes later, the next live. And well, Trisha and I were kind of talking about that. Tony was asking in the chat whether or not we could see. So there's supposedly a Studio Series 86 movie line coming out, which they have not announced yet, but we've gotten multiple leaks already of, of figures so far. Um, you know, whether or not they do a Devastator, like a, a G1 movie Devastator in there, um, you know, or if we do any of the other combiners, um, you know, in that line too, so... Um, to touch on what Sergio said about the, uh, you know, the G1 guys and the movie guys, you know, I'm not much of a movie guy as far as the live action movies go. So it should speak even louder to them that G1 guys are picking up the studio series because they're built so good and because their car modes are accurate and because, you know, it's interesting and they're they're well built. So, I mean, I'm not I'm really not a, a big fan of the movies. I just I definitely like the toys. They're. They're nice. Yep. Um, I mentioned a minute ago, Anna, that these things have ankle tilts. Yeah, you showed them too. Well, one of you showed yeah. them. Boom. Got a nice ankle them. tilts too. Really chunky, ratcheted ankle yeah. tilts. Yeah. And that way. just looks like a nice, you know, a nice moving figure. Even though it's not a classic humanoid, you know, it doesn't fit that classic humanoid setting. It works best in four legs or, you know, Christian has it kind of a hunched humanoid type deal. It, it seems to move really well, which is cool. How does the head move? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. That would have been tough to do. Limitation.com. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, think that's one detriment. Another one is this mixing barrel thing. It just yeah, it, it just doesn't sits. really go anywhere. I thought that it's I a hat. remember when we oh, were when we were Sean's speculating. Better than mine. Yeah, when we um, the only reason that is is because I've sandwiched it here between that's, these. Uh, I don't have those open. Sandwich it more. Yeah, that's pretty much all you can do. You're, there's no clips. I mean, there's these like tabs right here, but that tabs onto uh, yeah. overload. But on the head, it just kind of clips over and then it just yeah it's got this little piece here in the in the front here where it can clip onto overload and you'd think they would design a tab on mixmaster to put that in and they just didn't i don't know why it's a bummer totally you know, nice it doesn't really go anywhere because it's it is kind of stuck around the barrel so it flops but it doesn't really go anywhere yeah as long as these are closed because i can have it upside down but, you know, like movie toys are, are traditionally kibbly. Um, but these guys, you know, for movie toys, I think really clean up well in the back. I mean, you got the treads back here, but that's kind of accurate to how the uh, Vortex grinder works. And then he's got one piece of uh, Mixmaster kibble up there up top. You know, great. No, it's not so I don't see there's a major problem. So it it seems like that this figure is more impressive than the Titan class combiners we've gotten. Would you agree with with that? Like Absolutely. better than Devastator or Predaking? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only one I've owned was um, the Combiner Wars Devastator, the Titan, and um, it wasn't awful. I mean, it was a pretty good figure, um, but I just felt like you know the the vehicle modes were kind of lacking. The, the the individual robot modes were okay. You know, the, the Hasbro, they didn't have elbows. Um, you know, there was a lot of upgrade kits that were missing weapons. They definitely could have thrown in a lot more. But this, because they were able to release them individually and not have to adhere to a price point, really, 
um, that's what made them so well. Because, like, I actually, um, I took a big gamble, but I originally bought two of each so that I could do one as robots and then one as Devastator because the individual robots, they're all fantastic. Like, they're all really good on their own. Um, the exception being uh, Hightower, but that's really mostly to, to the limitation of his design. Um, you know, he, he, the CGI model for him isn't great, so that doesn't really translate into a good toy. Um, but I sold off my second set, and I'm just going to wait until hopefully the um, box set comes out to get my second set. Um, but, you know, building it over time not only added to the hype, but again, because they were able to release them one at a time, they were able to include accessories, um, the engineering that went into it. Um, you know, they got a bigger budget than, you know, I assume with the Titans, they have to adhere to that $150 overall budget. Whereas this, to put all together, was what, like 260 It's, it's 260 Around 260 ish retail. Uh, so it's more than a Titan class. Um, but you definitely get your bang for your buck because yeah. you know it's it's not it's not like they focused all their attention on the combination or all their attention on their individual robots. It feels just like the whole the overall package is really good. Yeah, and the price is spread out over two years, so it's not doesn't hurt that bad. Plus, no, the long the they long spread time out. between the first release and the last release, you you get to enjoy the robot individually instead of just. Buy yeah. them all set, put them together, sitting on the shelf, and then never touching it again. That is and a good spread argument out. for spreading them yeah. out, is that you mm -hmm. actually do get to enjoy Because a lot of us are just going to buy combiners so they can combine them. Yeah, right. You okay. know, because combiner, combiner Wars was all at once, either all in the same wave or one in this wave, and then the next wave you get the rest of them. Whereas this, not every Studio Series wave had a Constructicon. So, you know, you didn't get. You, you may have gotten two of them back to back, but then you would go six months without another one. And so that's what built up the hype, especially the hype of waiting for Overload. That was you know, like the big, I guess the peak of the hype because, you know, it's like we had no idea what he was going to look like. He was the final piece to look to get it combined. Up until then, we just had people, you know, doing this where they would just do the top half and then rest him on the legs and you'd get sort of an idea of what it would look like. Um, but I thought that that was brilliant, you know, making him the last piece instead of, you know, making like the legs the last piece so that you would have the top half, you know, by making Overload the last piece, then you truly didn't get, you truly, like, up until I had it in hand, I had no idea how big it was going to be. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely insane that they managed to get the leader classes at the price point that they did because they're both massive compared to, to today's leaders. The leader classes in this set, they're definitely like on the scale of the old leaders we used to get 10 years ago. They are gigantic. So now, would you say that the DNA kit is a must-have? Uh, Ron is asking that in the chat, and then he also has two baseballs after that for some reason. Hmm. I appreciate that you mentioned the emoji, because I was, I was ready to add the emoji if you didn't say it aloud. Oh, so wrecking balls. So I'm getting it. Yeah, it's. I think it is. I mean, the the. I think the head flaps, the flaps, the bunny ears thing, definitely add more to the top of the figure. I feel like the top of the figure is kind of lacking. Um, I forgot what else comes with those. It's oh, those chest tubes. Pieces. Yeah. Yeah, those tubes also kind of add a little bit more bulk to the top area, um, and then of course the wrecking balls. You know which. You have to get. <laughs> like you, you gotta do you it. Have to. You got this. Dude. If you're gonna it's, get the set, yeah, you just, you're gonna you have, have to. to. I mean, if if you're gonna get this big ugly mug to be a talking point in your collection, you're gonna have to just you know the cherries on top, both of them. You know when so the next time somebody comes over and they're like, "Whoa, what's this big looking thing?" And you're like, "Yeah, check this out," and you know swing them around. Yep. Yeah. They did neuter the it's, bulldog, so. You know. It's so I mean, you have to lean into it, or else it's just sad. And so it's definitely such a lean low, into it. It is. It's such a low point in the fandom that you just have to celebrate it. You have to laugh at it. I personally always thought that the humor in the live action movies was one of the few parts I actually liked. So I'm all for it. Like it's 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 crude, but whatever. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of um, locker room humor. But, no. Interesting oh, take. Just leave it super <laughs> childish. It's fine. Oh jeez. Yeah, the the bro humor. 
but yeah but it's i don't know it's i think overall i think you should definitely look into if you can get the if the box set is a real thing i would definitely go for it because individually now not so much i mean scrap uh scrap metal on his own is reaching 150 on his own so that is ridiculous look at that yeah he's already got it yeah that's I know. I think I'm not going to have it much longer now that I've heard how much it's yeah. worth. Yeah, that was that's what held me in selling my second <laughs> my second set was I was able to make so much back off of it. <laughs> it was like that was what made me end up selling my extras because I was I was going to keep them all until I I had doubles of all of them and then open them up and display them all. Um, but I ended up selling them and then I was able to get some other stuff using the money. Um, but if the box set is real, definitely go for it. I think I think it is. I think it's going to be real. We just don't know when or where it's going to come out. We'll we'll find out probably next weekend at PulseCon. Yeah, if not soon. If not, this the is holidays the, are coming up. Is this the first time a Studio Series figure or set of figures have really gained in value like this? Because I just Here, can't think of another. Um, there's a few others, I think. Of caliber. Mm. Iron no, Hide did it they're... briefly, but not not to he's, this extreme. He's yeah. he's settled. Yeah, he's definitely expensive. He's still like a fifty dollar figure, but you know that's only twenty dollars over retail. Where you know scrap metal retailed for twenty, and now it's one hundred and fifty. Like it's, I think that one is the most. I think he's the most uh, valuable Studio Series currently. Even the SDCC bumblebees aren't that much. Wild. Rampage. Rampage was commanding a higher price for a little bit, but then Skipjack was revealed. So, he well, he's climbing up because I mean, technically, yeah. you need both. If you're a completist like me, you need both. I have both. I still, I just haven't gotten around to switching the legs. But well, yeah, but if you're not, screen... not to form the combiner. No, no. If you're going just for the combiner, um, then you only need one. Um, you know, pick your poison, really, whichever color you prefer. Do you, do you uh, want him to have a C3PO red leg or a normal yellow leg? Yeah, but if if you're a completist, you need both, which is annoying. <laughs> and then one in package, of course, right? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, sure. A couple, why not? You know, since it's They're so cheap, why really, not? They, they look really nice in package too. I mean, when I opened Overload, I was just like, "Geez, <laughs> like how big it is!" And like it was, it was almost bust. It was almost busting out of the plastic with just how much. I was surprised they were able to stuff that thing in a normal box. I thought it was going to come in the box like Jetfire. Jetfire had a bigger, had a larger than normal box, but like they managed to stuff this dude into a normal size leader class box. That was insane. It was sandwiched in there. <laughs> well, and that's not something that we've gotten. We haven't gotten that feeling on leader class for a while. I feel no. like it's kind of the opposite where you like get it and you're like, oh, this is it. Like it's yep. a little bit light here. Yeah, it's, scavenger and overload really buck that. Yeah, like Serge said earlier, they're kind of comparable to stuff we had ten years ago. They probably accomplish it by you know lack of parts count because they have yeah. to be robust because they're the core of the combiner. But it doesn't sacrifice anything from their normal transformation, their normal robot, normal vehicle modes. They look fine just the way they are, and then they function yeah, really well with the core of the combiner. It was a combination of a few things, especially scavenger with. His CGI design very, being very simple, you know, he was able to get away with being such a low parts count, you know, where the larger pieces like the wheels are just, for the most part, a large, solid chunk. Um, you know, they didn't need to focus on a lot of the pieces. Um, but I think it really gives us some insight onto how Hasbro does their budgeting now, whereas, you know, we definitely... Um, Studio Series has definitely been an example where it shows that they definitely budget by wave. And, you know, they, they were able to accommodate that because, you know, Overload, uh, his wave made was Scavenger. So I assume that they saved some money by repacking an older figure uh, or a previously uh, released wave mate. Um, but it's, it's just, it's, yeah. I mean, it's it's very different from what we saw originally that, I don't know if you guys remember that prototype that we saw, like, two years ago it's vastly different than what we got which is kind of weird it's very weird that they that i know me and christian talked about this before if 
for the listeners that know what we're talking about. I think it was like London Comic Con or something. It was like when Hasbro did that European tour. They hit up like London, France, and a couple other European countries. Um, they had showed off a gray model of um, Devastator, and that apparently was a very, very early um, prototype. And it was just really odd that they chose to show that off because that's usually like an internal prototype kind of thing, um, which is vastly different than what we ended up getting. That looked way different, uh, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, um, but it's it's finally here. <laughs> well, it seems almost weird, though, because, like, if the figures started coming out a couple years ago, like, you would have thought that they would have finalized the design overall, like, at that point, you know, like, at least yeah, kind of had it. They, so. Well, according to Paul, they, they designed them all at the same time. So they had them all at the same time so when they showed that when they showed that prototype it was an all gray model that was before that was before we saw any of the individuals um so i don't know it's just it's that was very weird to me he's a very weird release by hasbro i mean i love it but a lot of the things that they did with him was a lot of firsts um for hasbro you know especially with the fact that it took him two years to come out with it um is great for the studio series line because i don't think we've had a continuous transformer line in a very long time where it spanned through multiple years under the same line Hmm. that's true that's a good point so just out of curiosity like you had you had mentioned that you know it's definitely better than the other combiners that hasbro's put out like how would you compare it to third party type of combiners like if you're gonna say you know tfc or you know transmission whatever kind of warbitron uh kind of ones like would you say it's like anywhere comparable at all or is it it's kind of apples to oranges really yeah it's too far different to to compare yeah it i think if they did don't you collect the third party devastator um yeah so far i only have the head they just released their long haul um, but, um, I haven't gotten around to purchasing one. I'm, I'm waiting to accumulate a little bit more rewards in, um, in, uh, chosen prime, uh, points. Um, so far I only have the head and just comparing them to our apples to oranges. I was pretty fair. Again. A lot of reviewers were very harsh on the, um, the devil savior mix master, um, which I definitely can see why, um, just from personal experience, it took me maybe two to three hours just to transform it from robot into mixing truck. Uh, it was very difficult. It was not fun. I th- I don't think I will ever do it again. I did it once and I'm never going to do it again. Um, so, but the head mode looks amazing, but that's where that differs with the Hasbro while the, while the third party devastator, the devil savior looks fantastic. looks like it walked off the screen in combined mode. The Hasbro one, is a much more fun figure overall because it doesn't take me three hours to transform the head. Uh, but I think it still has, if you're a movie collector like me, it's definitely, both of them definitely do have a place in each collection. Um, but it's, it's a really hard comparison. I think if Hasbro were to do a G1 combiner in this style where they released it over time and individually, then I would say it's a little bit more comparable to maybe like a TFC style combiner, but TFC's combiners have always been more on the simple side because they're more, more geared towards chug collectors. Um, but yeah, I don't think it'd be a fair comparison to, to compare this to the, to any other third party combiner. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I could say the degree of fun that I had with building this Devastator was greater than the degree of fun I had building any of TFC's offerings. That's about the, the much I can say. Yeah. 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 So I, th- I think until the rest of Devil Savior comes out, then <laughs> we won't be able to really uh, much of a fair comparison. But, um, you know, it's just... It's it's just really good. It's it's just a good figure. I mean, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody really likes the the way that the figure looks, uh, but I think objectively, it's a good figure. Yep. 
So you mentioned before, Serge, that you had originally bought two of all of them so you could have robot mode and devastator mode. And then you mentioned that you got rid of them and you're just hoping for a box set now. <clears throat> all three of you, do you think this is a set that's actually worth, you know, owning two of or actually bothering to take apart and display in robot mode sometimes? Or is this just a devastator? It won't be too hard to take it apart and put it in robot mode. Is it worth uh, it? You mean just to have one? Yeah, just to bother. Yeah. Like, do you, yeah. would you really want to put your robot modes back together again yeah. and then that's, eventually that's, go to Devastator? That's half the fun of being a Transformers collector is, you know, you actually get to mess with your toys instead of just sit them on the shelf, pose them really cool, sit them on the shelf and never touch them again. A lot of people know. do that, Sean. I don't you know. Get a, you, you get a chance. Well, you know. Um, I haven't got to do it lately, but I used to like to put my stuff up on the shelf all in ro robot mode and take a box of them with me upstairs and transform over to, to uh, alt mode while I'm watching TV or whatever. And then, you know, slowly everything's going back to alt mode on the shelf. And then once it's there, you know, go back through. It gives you an excuse to touch your toys. Good policy. Yes, I'd say... It's, it would be worth having two. I will not get them just because I don't want to spend another 260 on this whole thing. But the robot modes and the vehicle modes for this whole crew are really, really superior. I think mm -hmm. Serge mentioned it along the way somewhere that in the process of building this over two years, we got to experience the individual figures along the way. Mm -hmm. And that really gave us time to appreciate how good they actually are as individuals, not just as combiner pieces. Yeah, especially if you compare them to the original Revenge of the Fallen figures, um, which is, you know, the, the original Revenge of the Fallen line was, is my favorite movie line. Um, and comparing even comparing the originals to this one, um, I think that even with the combination parts, these are a much better, much, much better experience than the, than the originals. The, the, the original ones are still great, great toys. Um, but, you know, Mixmaster in particular was, again, very hard to transform. Um, it is very fiddly. Um, the mix master that from this set is very screen accurate, and it's very much easier to transform. It's not by much. I think it's he's still definitely the harder one. I think of all of them to get him in from from vehicle into robot and 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 so forth. Um, but you know they they've definitely have come a, come a long way, and I think that's overall what I really like about Studio Series is, you know, we see this all the time in G1 figures where. You know, how many times they reinvent the wheel, how many times we get a new G1 Optimus and how each time it's a different transformation. Um, but I feel like with movie figures, um, they really have a lot more freedom. And, you know, now that they have 10 years of engineer more engineering experience, now they're really able to shine, you know, with with um, how these figures are made. So it's just, you know, if, if I think if you had the original ones, it's definitely also worth um, picking up this set. Um, uh, I think the um, what I'm doing for now, since I don't have my extras anymore, is I have the original Revenge of the Fallen like in their individual modes by this set. Um, so that's also something you can do, you know, if you have the original Revenge of the Fallen ones. But um, you know, this set we were able to see High Tower for the first time. We were able to see Overload for the first time. Um, previously, we only got them in the little Legends um, combiner, but now we have them in you know this big scale and I, I really again i don't think that any of them are bad figures individually you know with again with high tower just because of the nature of his design being a t-rex looking um crane um that doesn't really translate well into a toy but all the other ones there i mean rampage he now he has a stand the original one you had to like <laughs> position the the, the shovel to just to make him stand but rampage now comes with his own little stand uh, you know long haul is this big chunky brute uh just like in the cgi and um you know i think anna has said before that you know scrap metal on his own is just a fantastic figure too so you know i think just the whole thing is just i i really could not stop gushing over this once i finally got it all together with me not being a um you know, a straight up movie fan. Um, you know, buying three of the three of these eight, it was a kind of a uh, means to an end. Uh, the three I wasn't excited about was um, Scavenger, 
because he just looks like a train wreck. I mean, he's got the two wheels, and uh, he's not very fun. Um, Rampage doesn't have any legs, so that was a big, you know, turnoff for me. And then uh, Hightower looks like a, some kind of a raptor with a humanoid face, and so, you know, I, I didn't really mess with any of those other than, you know, I had to buy those for, for the uh, combined mode, so... Other than that, though, the, like, yeah, like, Long Hauls, he's awesome. Mixmaster's really cool. Um, was it uh, Scrapper's pretty good? Um, and then, um, which one, which one, uh, Anna, yeah, which one's that one called again? It's Scrap Metal. Scrap Metal, yep, that Scrap Metal. He, uh, yeah, he was one, probably my favorite to mess with. It's really fun. He's a really fun, just, like, deluxe figure to play with. Yeah. Not quite modern articulation, but still, like, you know, has enough personality that it just kind of plays on its own. I like his little claw hands. Right. That's personality yeah. for a Transformer. <laughs> I do hope that we see repaints of all these guys. Skipjack mm-hmm. is first in line for that. That would solve Anna's original question of having one in combined mode, having one in robot mode. Um, they have Skipjack, like I said, coming out. Um, Demolisher and Payload are already built-in repaints from the original line for Scavenger and Long Haul. I'm sure they could come up with some for the other guys. Yeah, yeah, Christian and I have gone back and forth of, you know, they for, need to make years. a Studio Series select line. You know, they're, they're going to make them all back. in lime green, you know. Just like <laughs> that, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. buy that. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm with Catherine that, that uh, I want a G2, G2 re- repaint set of this. That would be it's true. already in G2. One repaint colors. If they did them all in in yellow, then it <laughs> even that too. I mean, they're all construction vehicles. Why orange, not? Yeah, orange is pretty. That'd be fine too. Oh. I would not buy G1 repaint of this. I would. <laughs> yeah, certainly. I would. I like I like the weird G1 colored movie stuff because it's always so funky and freaky looking. I like all of them except Devastator. I don't know why. I always liked all of them. <laughs> you have to say, no. it's really strange to watch you all sit there and, like, talk about how that's, like, you know, kind of the first, like, complete, solid combiner figure that feels like one product. Because the, the G1 style, the Combiner Wars Devastator, just, like, that was it for me. Like, that is still one of my favorite combining toys ever made because it feels like, I know you don't like it at all, and other people have talked about how it's only okay, and I just love that thing. And like that thing feels like one solid giant toy, or it could be you know six smaller mediocre toys. And I just I don't know. I really love it, and I like the fact the colors go together. So it's just a you know different perspectives. I liked it better when it was. Smaller. I think we'll. I think we'll see them back again soon. I mean, there's there's no way that you know they're going to stop remaking the same G1 figures over and over again. We're still going to keep buying them. (laughs) I've done it for the the last 15 years. Yeah, but the Studio Series 86 line, I would not be surprised if they start releasing one-by-one Constructicons. You know, I wouldn't say right away, but, you know, there might be a split off of Studio Series, and, you know, movie guys still keep getting their movie stuff. G1 guys get Studio Series movie stuff, so... Yeah, if they made a if they made a Studio Series Devastator where the robot modes looked, you know, as good as Siege and Earthrise mm. and all that do, and that'd I could just awesome. keep my combiner the way it is because I like it how it is, that would be really great. You know, and yeah, even that, if they do that, I would not sell this guy. This guy is this guy's pretty cool. You know, even though yeah. three of them are in my in my eyes turds that I'm not interested in. You know, they uh, you need all eight to to make them combine. So I'm glad that we all agree that doing this one by one approach would be good for the G1 combiners too. Because I yeah, I think that's a, a good unanimous opinion to to have. Yeah. Well, it really, you know, I mean, it harkens to the original G1. You know, I mean, if you were if you were privileged enough that your parents bought you all of them at the same time, you know, or if they got you the gift sets. Um, the, the ones that were available as gift sets, I guess, depending on, you know, where you lived. Uh, as I know some countries got them individual releases. You know, it harkens back to that, you know, the, the, the whole hunting for limb for limb, you know, waiting for the next one. 
I think it's a really good um, a really good marketing tactic, making us wait. Just it made me even more anxious to purchase them. You know, like me, me and Christian, we were just going back and forth. Like, when the heck is you know Overload gonna ship? When is this dude gonna? We we're we we're out here comparing last year's releases so that we calculated you know when he's going to come out you know like okay last yeah. year august was when we got leaders last year so that means that this year we're going to get a leader class wave in august too and it happened to down be true, to the so. week that they came out yeah. like okay it should be <laughs> during this time yeah I and i actually. think really and i think really that's what makes it fun i mean we've um the of all the figures uh i think nowadays especially with uh, um the way that the fandom is completely connected online um, we're very used to spoilers. We're very used to seeing things months before they come out. But Devastator, they really kept it hush. You know, we really didn't see him combine until a couple months before he came right out. At the end. Yeah. yeah, and that's really what made it fun because I, I know I complained to Christian the other day that one thing that annoys me about all these leaks is that it's not really fun. You know, finding out what's coming out next. We already knew. Every time they do a live stream, we already know what they're talking about. We know that they're going to show something we watched some guy review six months ago. It's <laughs> so, like a good show topic, Serge. The effects it of could be. Yeah. I mean, it could, yeah, I mean, not to go on a tangent, but, you know, really that's what made collecting this set so much fun. Was we really were in the dark for most of the time. You know, we knew who was coming, obviously, because, you know, they told us from the start hey this is who's coming out but we didn't know what they looked like and that's the best part they kept it very hush hush and up until they came out we we didn't know what overload even looked like fully you know until january of this year i think when they did um was the tokyo toy show i think in january february, but yeah february yeah so you know six months before release yeah. so did you wait to um purchase them you know wait for your order to ship online or was you know if you saw a constructicon in store it was immediate purchase without thinking about it it was whatever came first for me um i think most of them were bought online i have had i've had really good luck with amazon pre-orders recently um i got my skipjack super early i got my overload very early to uh blitzwing i think i got my blitzwing before he was even cited retail from amazon so amazon's on top of their pre-orders recently uh which is great um uh, but the uh, i think the first original ones like um uh scrap metal and high tower i think i got those in store but everybody else was online oh eric in the chat is mentioning the toy robot ma- uh magazine issue two is coming out soon what did you think in of uh, the first issue do you like it? Uh, I want to talk about that eventually, relatively soon. I, man, you're from me on the I realize spot it's right off topic. Now. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to do other than tell the truth. I actually, so mine came um, pretty bent from the shipping, so I actually put it between two books in my garage and literally forgot about mm. it until this week. Is that the Kickstarter mm. that they did, where they did like a toy magazine? Yeah, yep. yeah, that was really yep. excited yeah, for I it. A- how Omega much was Supreme that thing? on the cover? I don't actually remember how much I paid for my issue. I was super pumped. I really like how it looks. I glanced at the articles. I was very excited about the whole yeah. thing. And like I said, I just had to straighten it out. I couldn't let it be bent. And then I totally forgot it was in my garage. So I need to go rescue it and actually read it. I remember hearing about that because I had heard. I like the concept. I like physical things in my hands. That's why I bought right. that art book, the Transformers art book. Um, but I feel like with something, when it comes to news, I mean, you know, we already, we, we see everything the second it goes up on Twitter. As soon as something goes up on Twitter, it's already on Facebook and all the 50,000 Transformers groups that there are. Um, yeah, sure. But I mean, toy so, photography is a form of art. So I think that it, it still has a place to do things true. like that. And, you know, what I would really like to see, and, you know, like I said, I haven't read Toy Robot yet to make sure to be able to say whether or not it's there. What I really miss about reading toy magazines was just, you know, I used to read Toy Fair every month, week, day, whatever, um, when it would come out. And I love the humor. It was just such stupid, goofy toy humor. You know, it was a lot of types of jokes that only toy collectors would really resonate with. Like the wiki. And I, <laughs> I really miss it. It was just so goofy. 
So I, I, I'd like to see something like that again. TF, TF Wiki humor. That's my favorite. They have That's some true. Great humor. <laughs> they have some great humor. Yeah. Get right. your hands right, on Lucas. Lucas Rilla Boy. Yeah, he's 16 inches tall in, in this mode. Yeah. So he's, he's pretty tall. And it's not that cold outside, so, you know, it's, pretty, <laughs> it's a good. 16 inches is pretty si- similar to some of those third-party chug combiners. Like the, um, I think they were like, I don't know. And how much is the Titan class Devastator? How tall is he? I mean, obviously, this one is a lot different just because, like, it's hunched over. Like 18 or 19 inches. Like, I mean, this seems like a lot bigger mass of a figure. Oh, yeah, this thing is. Oh, totally. (laughs) When I shipped my extras, um, it was missing uh, Scavenger. Scavenger was the last one I needed to buy an extra. By the time time I found an extra in store, uh, I had already decided to sell off my, my other set, so I didn't even bother... Um, buying it because that would have raised the price and I feel like selling lots is harder to find a buyer Um, but when I shipped them out they were all mint and sealed box Um, but I I found them in a a pretty much a box that fit them very well not a lot of extra space but when I weighed it it was damn near eight pounds and that was without without scavenger you know give or take the boxes or maybe what a couple ounces each if that so Oh, he's, the he's plus or minus around, boy. yeah. He, so about around eight pounds ish, which is it's it's heavy. <laughs> I mean, you know, just holding him up. If you hold him up, your arm gets tired after a bit. <laughs> it's it's really big. And, yeah. All right, well, it sounds you know, like it's, it's a buy. It's, it's a must buy from all of you guys, huh? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a. You know, it's a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, I, I don't even know what I'm looking for. It's basically a, not a benchmark, but it's, you know, it's definitely a piece to have. That's the first, you know, first time they've done Constructicons released one by one like that. You know, at first oh, time yeah. you've, you've had, you know, studio or the, the movie guys in such good detail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this this blows the original Revenge of the Fallen Supreme class out of the water. I this is just it's so much better in every way, and it's about I'd say about the same size. I think I wouldn't recommend paying any outrageous aftermarket prices, particularly on like scrap metal or you know, whoever's you know, yeah. tomorrow. If you're if, the yeah, if you're serious about getting them, if you're serious about getting them. I think, especially Anna. I mean, if if you can get a hundred bucks for scrap metal himself, that's already half of almost half of what the box set is going to cost. So, yeah. if you have some of them and you're trying to get the you're trying to get the the rest of the more expensive ones like um, long haul and scrap metal, I definitely would recommend selling off what you have and then just wait for the box set or keep what you have and just you know end up getting the box set because you're pretty much going to be spending box set money on the most expensive pieces. So you might as well just keep what you have and, you know, live with the extras or sell them off. As long as the box set does happen. We're just not, we're not starting. Yeah, I'm, pretty, so. we, I'm like we should know 80%. Next weekend. Yeah. I'm like 80% that it's going to happen because we've, we've had listings for it. Um, as far as, you know, we, the, the first time we heard about it was that listing for, I think it was like a British wholesaling company um, had it up. And then we had that supposed was a Korean South Korean company I think that yep. showed up the box. Um, so that one then, looked a little bit iffy. Uh, the, box iffy. Be, the box the could be easy. The box looked legit. Fake. The box. That's the thing. Yeah, a yeah. box is very easy to fake. A tray that takes a lot of work. A lot of work to fake. It takes someone who knows a lot about vacuum forming. You know, to, yeah. to that'll be a really a big box. box. Yeah, I, think I mean, but it, it seems like the Hasbro would be leaving money on the table to not reissue this. So it's like, why? I mean, if it's going yes. for a fair amount already, I mean, it it, it seems like doing a box set I, would. I think it's I a no brainer. It's definitely going to be a no brainer that it's going to be a Pulse exclusive. You know, the holidays are coming up. Going to be a Pulse exclusive. Maybe they'll put it up. They'll put it up for All their Black Friday sale. I mean, if they're re-releasing yeah. Volcanicus, I mean, you got to imagine that they're going to do Devastator too, right? And if, 
it will not be the same price as what TF Source put up for. They put it up for like five hundred dollars. It won't be that. TF yeah, don't Source pay is that. known for don't their pay that. horrifying prices. Don't pay yeah. that. It'll be like two fifty, two seventy five, somewhere in yeah. that range. Yeah. I doubt that they're gonna mark it up by much. Um, yeah. And it's a perfect opportunity to make money off of the molds because you know, like a uh, uh, studio series has very few repaints, and mm-hmm. if they want to make some money off the molds, you know, it looks like from that leak, it looked like uh, Long Haul had some dirt desert camo or not camo desert kind of weathering on it. Is, yeah, yeah. So that's it's. It seems like the perfect uh, repaint opportunity was make this in like a weathered sandy color. Um, you know, much much like they, I think they did the twins back in the day, kind of like that. They did, they did them in this like sandy, um, looking color scheme. Um, so that's the most logical way for them to do a repaint. Whereas, you know, payload demolisher and and all that would be much tougher to release individually. So I think I'm, I'm about eighty percent sure that it's going to happen. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I. I don't know. Is is uh, Ouch My Wallet? Is that tomorrow? I haven't I talked heard. to Rob. Was it last it week? Their week. It was not last yeah. week. Yeah. So that would yeah, be the so, appropriate day for it if if I, it's coming around. I guess. Uh, I guess we'll see. I haven't talked to Rob yet, so I'm not sure if it, if it has or not. So I don't know if it happens. I can always come on and talk about this. There we go. Oh, yeah. Boy. Last night uh, we. Uh, talked about forgotten transformers so if you want to check that out there's a pre-record that i did with anna and jim and uh and jack so that's a little where i talked about power core there you go which did have normal hands and feet (sighs) Ta-da! it's a whole song of the show not really the cause the cause of many and christians come or christian and i's arguments damn those damn power cores how are they awesome? <laughs> Whatever. Hate, they're so bad. They're Why? so bad. How? How are they bad? They're well, perfect. They're it was a cool. It was a cool concept on paper, um, but the execution was just extremely poor. It was a cool concept on paper. It was an amazing concept in execution. Oh, no, it was they kept off. making them forever. <laughs> the individual amazing. figures. No. Okay, the individual figures came in some of the coolest target masters we've ever gotten. Yeah, but they, cool they, they messed it up by making the clear plastic. Oh, whatever. It looks kind of neat. Such a variety it's been 10 of years. Toys. They're all still alive. It looks neat, but God forbid you want to transform it. It's going to crumble They didn't make the joints like of clear it. plastic. That, they, they succeeded there. Mine are still strong. Mine are old. And yeah, awesome. Lucas, it's time for you to step in. Yeah. <laughs> Lucas enjoys this <laughs> no, kind of stuff. On my, Lucas. He's on my side. Yeah, no, I, I think that they're hot garbage. I didn't buy them, so, you know. Whatever. Wow. <laughs> You're supposed to be the moderator. You can't yeah. take sides. Well, whenever... whenever the, take sides. For all the... Oh, everyone listening, whenever the, whenever the vaccine comes out, we can finally go leave our houses again. Whenever the next convention is, you better show up because, you know, Christian and I are going one-on-one. And we're going to go in the ring, 10, 12 rounds. You know, we're going to duke it out over power core combiners. Bring your power cores with you to rip them off. Yeah, bring your power cores. So you can chuck (laughs) them at each other. Is Christian a surprise (laughs) Southpaw? Find out at the next con. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Well, uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight and, uh, you know, letting us know since I did not purchase this figure. Um, Thank you to everyone in the chat uh, that participated. Randall, Ron, Catherine, Eric. Tony, Peter, I'm trying to think if I missed anyone. I think that's it. Of course, it. me. Pete. So. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. And I guess we will see everyone next week. Good night, uh, everyone. Sweet.